Hello everyone, welcome to the 8A.6 video, which is about the fundamental theorem of algebra, and I'll explain what that is in a little bit. But in terms of learning targets, what we'd like to do is talk about the fundamental theorem of algebra and apply it. We still want to write a polynomial and find given zeros. We still want to find a polynomial and write as a product of linear factors. And we still want to use the rational root test or the rational zero test from the last video. Um, the difference is that in this video, the fundamental theorem of algebra also includes imaginary. So it's somewhat similar to what we have been doing, except for including imaginaries this time. For example, um, in this first one, if we want to find a polynomial with the given zeros, I have three zeros here, two of them which are imaginary. And, but even so, if I have three zeros, that means that my function or my polynomial is probably some kind of cubic because I have three zeros. And as you know, the degree is the max number of zeros you can have. So if I want to find the polynomial, we need to think backwards. If I have a zero of four that came from x minus four, if I have a zero of positive three i that came from x minus three i, and this last one came from x plus three i. Now, if this example had said leave in factored form, I would be done here, but it didn't specify. So we can completely multiply this out to make sure that it is a x to the third function. So if I want to multiply this all out, I would leave the x minus 4 as is, and I would distribute the two imaginary roots first so we can get rid of that i. And if I do that, I would get x squared plus 3ix minus 3ix minus, remember when you multiply these, that's minus 9i squared. So if I again kept the x minus 4 alone and kept simplifying this, these two middle terms would cross out and I'd be left with x squared, and then this piece is really negative 9 times negative 1, because i squared is negative 1, so this is really x squared plus 9. And if I want to keep multiplying this out even more, I can distribute again. So I could do um, x cubed plus 9x minus 4x squared minus 36. And so if I put this in standard form, my answer would be x cubed minus 4x squared plus 9x minus 36. So if you actually want to multiply it out, it did work. It is a cubic function. And if you wanted to just factor or leave it in terms of linear factors, that would be your answer. Now to the main part of this video, the fundamental theorem of algebra. What this states is, if you have a polynomial of nth degree, where n is bigger than 0, meaning if you have something like x to the first or x to the second or x to the third, here n would be 1, n would be 2, n would be 3. <clears throat> it's saying that one of your zeros has to be in the complex number system. What a complex number is, again, is in the form a plus bi. So if you have a function like x to the first, that's something that's a straight line. So what the theorem is saying is that you have at least one zero, an example, this zero, could be in the complex number system. So let's say that this is at two comma zero. Remember that you could write that um, this, an imaginary number, something in the complex number system is a real number plus the imaginary part. So if you had a root at two, you could write that as two plus zero i. So even things that have a real root could be written in the complex number system. If you had an x squared function, it's possible that you could have two roots. It's also possible that you could have uh, no real roots and your roots are imaginary, both of which can be written in the complex number system. Um, even with a cubic, if you have a cubic function and it hits one time, this would be a complex number. You could write this as a plus bi. That looks strange. Um, but you could have two imaginary answers also, which could also be written in the complex number system. Okay. So to show you what I mean in terms of an example, we want to find all the zeros and write the function in completely factored form as a product of linear factors. So if I wanted to find my roots first, I would set x squared plus 9 equal to 0. I would subtract the 9 and get x squared equals negative 9. Take the square root and get two roots that are both imaginary, plus or minus 3i. So in this case, my polynomial of degree, degree 2 did have two roots, and both of these could be written in the complex number system. 
technically, this could be written as 0 plus 3i and 0 minus 3i. So both of these are within this format, so the theorem is true. I do have at least one root in the complex number system. Now, if I want to actually answer this question, we did find the roots here, um, but the answer as a bunch of linear factors would be x plus 3i and x minus 3i. So this is my answer written in factored form. This next example, um, find all the zeros and write the function in completely factored form. So this one is similar to this previous example. So what I would like you to do is pause and try this example on your own. Um, again, you could use the rational root test, but I believe this one might just factor by grouping. So please pause now, find your roots, and see if you can write, write your polynomial in factored form. So here is my work by factoring by grouping. I got two of my roots to be imaginary, plus or minus 3i, one of my roots to be real. Um, the fundamental theorem of algebra says that at least one root will be in the complex number system. Um, you could write all of these roots in the complex number system, because this is really negative 1 plus 0i, and these are really 0, <clears throat> 0 plus 3i and 0 minus 3i. And this would be my answer in factored form, because if you take all these zeros and write them all as linear factors. The reason we call it linear factors again is because all of these powers are to the first here on the x term. That's why each one of these components is linear. Linear factorization theorem. Um, this, in so many words, is saying that if you have a polynomial of a certain degree, that's how many linear factors you're going to have. So for instance, in this example, I had something of degree 3. And notice that I had, sorry about that, notice that I had three linear factors. In the previous example, I had a degree of two. Notice that I had two linear factors. So what this theorem is saying is that that's how many linear factors you're really going to have. So this next example, if I have 2x to the fourth, I should have four linear factors in the end. And my goal of this problem is to list all the possible rational zeros, find all of the actual zeros, and then list in factored form as a function. And so I'm going to take this one in parts. If we want to list all the possible zeros, this is the plus or minus p over plus or minus q idea. Then to find all the actual zeros, I want to use synthetic division to find all the actual zeros. Okay. So what I would like you to do is please pause your video and see if you can find all the possible rational zeros first. So try this part on your own. As you're pausing, I will do it as well, and I'll come back with my answer. So please pause now. So to check back in with you for the first part, part A, I call it, all the factors of P are 1, 2, and 4. All the factors of Q are 1 and 2. So these are all my possible uh, roots, because if I took 1 divided by 1, 2 divided by 1, and 4 divided by 1, I would get these first four. If I took one divided by two, I'd get plus or minus a half. Two divided by two is already here, and four divided by two is already here. So I have eight possibilities this time. So for part B, I actually want to find my zero. So out of these eight options, what I also did while we were paused is I graphed my polynomial in Desmos. And I noticed that there are two roots according to the calculator, and we're going to use it to our advantage. So negative 1 half and positive 1 are going to be my possible rational root so far. So I'm going to write positive 1 and negative 1 half for myself. Because this is a fourth degree polynomial, I need to do synthetic division two times in order to get this down to a quadratic. So what I would like you to do again, I think it's good to pause, is I would like you to take the first root of 1 and I would like you to do synthetic division with this part, and I will do it myself also, and then I'm going to unpause and see if we match. So please pause now and try this. So you should have gotten the polynomial of 2x cubed plus 1x squared plus 8x plus 4. A few things I'd like to point out at this time is that these two roots that we found on the graph were originally um, an option for us. And also the reason we need to do synthetic division is because if you look back at the polynomial here, we can't factor this by grouping. There's no other way we know how to factor it, which is why we're doing synthetic division to reduce the degree. 
So what I'd like you to do at this point is we know based on the graph that negative one half is another option. So I would like you to do synthetic division again based on the polynomial that we just found. So please pause now to, to get this root into this polynomial. So if you did synthetic division the second time, you should have had 2x squared plus 0x plus 8. Because this is quadratic, I'm going to keep going and make this 2x squared plus 8 equals 0, and I'm going to keep solving this because I'm trying to find all my roots. So 2x squared is going to equal negative 8. So if I divide by 2, x squared equals negative 4. And if I take the square root of both sides, I would have two imaginary answers, plus or minus 2i. So I have found all my zeros. That was part, uh, part B, I guess. The zeros are 1, negative 1 half. So these are the two rational ones. And then I found two imaginary answers, which are all in the complex number system. So part C, the last list all in factored form. So if my roots are 1, negative 1 half, 2i, and negative 2i, that means that my function would look like this x minus 1, uh, x, let's go back to this one, so x um, minus 2i, x plus 2i, and then finally the negative 1 half, think about this backwards, um, it would actually end up being 2x plus 1, because if you think about solving this and setting this equal to 0, if you subtract the 1 and divide by 2, you would get negative 1 half. So this would be your answer here in factored form. So this one, again, I would like you to pause and try on your own. Find all the zeros. Um, yes, it does have a degree higher than uh, 3, so we can't necessarily factor by grouping. My suggestion to you would be thinking about greatest common factor and see if you can factor this using ways that you know from Unit 7. So please pause now. Try this one completely on your own, and I will have my work when you get back. All right, guys, here is my work for this next example. I took out a GCF of x and was left with a x to the fourth. Rather than doing the synthetic division, I noticed that x to the fourth is x squared times x squared, and 3 is 3 times 1. And to get a 2, I got a positive 3 and negative 1. When I set all of these parts equal to 0, my roots were 0, 0. I root 3, comma 0, and negative I root 3, comma 0. The reason there's a root there is because 3 is not a perfect square. Notice that I did get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 roots, which makes sense with the degree. It also makes sense that some of them are imaginary, because it's, not, it's possible that you don't have all five being real. Another reason I put this one in the notes is to remind you that you don't always have to do this method unless you have absolutely nothing else. So this one, because I couldn't do grouping, uh, because there was no greatest common factor, that's why I relied on the synthetic division. But this one, I based it on methods I already knew. Something else I'd like to point out to you, which is going to answer the next question, is I don't know if anyone's noticed, but any time I have an imaginary answer or a complex answer, has anyone noticed that they always come in pairs? I root 3, I negative root 3. If I go back to this previous example, I had positive 2i and negative 2i. If I even go back further, I had positive 3i and negative 3i. So whenever I have an imaginary answer, I notice that they always come in pairs. So what do you notice about complex roots? Always come in pairs, which is interesting, because if I was going to answer my last question, find a polynomial with real coefficients that has i equals 2i as a root and x equals 2 as a root, if I have an imaginary answer here in the complex number system, I know that this actually comes in pairs. So I really have plus or minus 2i. So if I want to find a polynomial, I really have x plus 2i, x minus 2i, and x minus 2 as roots. So what's interesting about that is you, so if you ever see a problem that has a 2i or 3i or 4i or whatever, you really have two um, answers in the complex number system. So this would be your answer if you kept it in factored form. If you pause now, I will unpause and show you what the answer would be if you multiplied it out. All right, guys, here's my multiplication work. My final answer was x to the third minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 8.